is raining catfish and dog sharks out there right now. It is like zero visibility, absolutely insane amount of rain. That's gonna change my plans for tomorrow. I was gonna go trout fishing, but considering the high waters, muddy water, zero visibility, we're gonna have to make a little change in our plans. And I think I'm gonna go fish a pond that I usually don't fish too much because it gets so much freaking pressure. But under these specific conditions, I feel like the big mamas might just come out and play. We'll find out tomorrow. I'll see you guys there. All right, guys, it is the next morning. And two things, number one, yes, I chopped off all my hair. I was tired of fishing with a wet mop on my freaking head. So that is gone, feeling great. Number two, completely change my plans i woke up this morning and i just felt like this place right here was the place to be this is not a little pond this is lock raven reservoir 2400 acres i'm gonna attempt to catch fish from here from the bank this is gonna be one heck of an adventure today and if i can succeed it's gonna be epic it's also a lot colder than i thought we're way up north 38 degrees I did not bring any extra clothing. You see my breath? So I'm just gonna have to endure that until the sun comes up. But for now, we're gonna grab our stuff, head down to the water, and uh, let's do some fishing. Backpack going on. Let's grab our one rod and one reel. And it's time to start today's adventure. Right now, I'm heading down to pretty much the most northern part of the lake. And the reason for that is number one, the water should be a lot dirtier. And number two, because of that, the water should also be a lot warmer. We're about to check the temperature. And if the water is in the mid fifties, that means I'm correct. If it's in the low fifties, like the rest of this lake, then it's not gonna be good for me. But holy moly, this is a steep cliff right here. Looks like we're gonna do some more cliff fishing. Oop. Ah, there is a trail here. That's very good. And got the bridge. Ah, oh, man. This is going to be a little trickier than I thought the fish. We're already here, so we're just going to give this a shot. All right. Well, I guess we're starting at the bridge. Got a nice brush pile right here. Might be some crappie, but today we're going for a gigantic Mondo bass. And I happen to have a bait on that might actually work very well. I was messing around with the click bait. But first things first, clip on. Mom, let me check the water temp. The moment of truth. Today's water temp we are dealing with is 52 degrees. That's not great, not terrible. I think we can make it work. All right. Ugh. You know what? Need to make a move. Too loud here. Water's too shallow. This place is not it. We're gonna head down. I think somewhere along this stretch there's gonna be fish, but we're gonna need to move a little bit until we can find them. Dang, man. I think I might need my waders, guys. I don't think I'm gonna be able to cover the proper amount of water, considering how shallow it is, considering the brush we're dealing with. If I'm, if I'm not wearing waders, you know what? We're gonna slip those on, and then we're gonna hike through many miles of forest and trails today in our waders, which should be okay, because it's, it's kind of cold. Whew. It is precisely for times like this that the waders always live my trunk like so gotta move the boys around make sure they're comfy all right Heck, giant wedgie man all right that's better that'll do Shoes in here, and you know what guys, we are ready to actually begin our adventure 
we got to catch some fish today. And I'm not going to lie, we have a chance to catch a PB. Not likely, but we have a chance. Let's get down there. We've gone down about a quarter of a mile. And these waders have significantly decreased my mobility, my agility, and my flexibility. But it should allow us a lot more access to fish into the water, cover more water, make longer casts. So I think it'll definitely be worth it. You know, just out of curiosity, let me see, let me see how crazy this muddy crap is right here. All right, not too bad. Actually, check it out. It's not bad. It's pretty solid. But I'm thinking these waves are definitely a good choice. I mean, look how far I can get walk out here. I'm walking all the way out here. I'm about 10, 15. Oh, almost fell backwards. That would have been the end of today. Almost 10 or 15 feet out. You know what? Now that I can get all the way out here, let me go ahead and just bomb a few casts of this clickbait. Drag it along the bottom. Yeah, I mean, still shallow as heck, but maybe it's some fish moving up in the shallows. Dark water, it's warmer. Just chilling, soaking up some sun sunshine. Oh, oh, oh my gosh, is this, ah! ah! I almost pulled one, <laughs> like almost like father like son guys. Holy moly. Saw that thing flying at me in slow motion. Woo, that could have been bad. Well, first stick fish of the day. Currently standing on a nice uh, beaver dam perhaps. It's actually somewhere that's pretty fishable. Banging the flat banger into all kinds of stuff. Water is still extremely muddy. Visibility about one foot, probably a little bit less. I'm feeling good. I'm gonna keep up this pattern for at least an hour or so and see what happens. Okay. Don't fall. Whew. Woo! It's a steep incline right here. Don't have the traction I normally do. Okay. Sneak in here, make a few casts, and then we're gonna rinse and repeat until we until we find a fish. Definitely not the easiest fishing, but I can tell you guys what. Ain't no one's been fishing out in this area for a very long time. Uh, oh, I'll tell you guys what's not it. Trying to travel through an unpaved path like this. Mountainous, steep. This is going to be tricky. Especially with my reduced flexibility in these waders and traction. All right, we're gonna have to focus here. Oh my gosh, it's like 30 feet I have to climb. Almost a vertical degree slope. Oh, we are on a mission right now, guys. And that mission entails a little bit of, a little bit of climbing, and so be it. Yeah. Ah, okay. Let's go this way. Ah. 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 Look at that. We were fishing right at the edge. I mean, I don't even want to get too close because I'm afraid I'm going to fall down. But that, you probably can't tell from the camera, is about 40 feet down. We were just fishing down there. I'll tell you guys what, at the very least, I am getting one heck of a workout today. Woo! The good news is, I think there's kind of a trail over there. Kind of a trail that goes through these, uh, through these mountains, I guess. I guess you can call these mountains. I mean, if you look over there, I mean, that I gotta call that a mountain right there. Small mountain, whatever. This is, uh, I mean, this is bank fishing for you. Not always easy. You don't always catch a lot, but I'll tell you guys what, you'll always have an adventure when you go bank fishing. 
Here we are guys, new portion of the reservoir, thick woods, but at least I can walk through them and the incline is not such that I'm dying trying to get up and down. We're gonna go over there, check out, scope it out a little bit and uh, see what we got to deal with. Let's go and take a look. We are dealing with, the water temp's actually exactly the same, 52 degrees. I mean, this is just crazy for Lock Raven to see the water this cloudy. I mean, this visibility is about 18 inches or so. I was hoping to fish a jerk bait, but seeing this, I think there's really only one thing we can fish right now. Heavy, heavy winds, lots of sunlight. I think you guys already know I'm about to pull out. We are gonna use the zinger and, hmm, I gotta be able to cast through these heavy winds. So we're gonna go half an ounce and go with this sexy shad pattern right here. Imitate the shad a little bit, but also be visible in the murky water. Oh, 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 we are, baby. Oh, oh, it's big. It's big. Holy moly. Six hours of the fishing. Oh, it's a good bass. It's a good. Oh, let's go. Finally. Yes, yes. Stay on, baby. Stay on. Let's get in. My. Oh, okay, okay. Come on. Get him on. Hey, 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 hey. No jump. Let's go. The zinger, baby! Nail him with both freaking hooks! Woo! Ah, right there. Mmm! The zinger, baby. Half ounce. I'll show you guys what I'm doing. One second. Let's just take a moment to appreciate this beautiful two and a half pounder absolutely gorgeous hey that's kind of weird guys check this out it has yellow spots on it what the guys look on the look on the dorsal fin right here what look at this whoa this guy look 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 this fish has black has that black color which is pretty common but it also has yellow spots on it i have never seen anything like that on a bass that is very interesting guys help me out comment below what is causing these yellow dots on this fish? Very interesting. Well, I don't want to keep the fish out of the water too long, so we're going to give her a sip of water, then we're going to let her go. Thank you, fish, for being number one. Been out here literally, let's see, eight, five, four, about five and a half hours. This is my first bite of the day. See you later, big girl. Go get big. Become a 10 pounder. I believe in you. Oh look, she's going right to cover. Okay, she's going over the cover. And she's making her way towards that branch over there. All right. Let me show you guys what, what's going on here. Massive amount of wind, as you can tell. We are just fishing a giant cove, fishing shallow. I'm casting a spinnerbait out, letting it sink all the way to the bottom. Then I'm slow rolling it as slow as I can, letting it bump into all the stuff on the bottom. It's a very sandy bottom. Let me show you guys this. This bottom is very sandy, lots of rocks and sticks in it. So this is perfect for pre-spawn. This is exactly where the fish want to be. And also, yes, the water clarity, very key. Look at the water clarity. It is a lot clearer than the mud we were fishing before. This is heavily stained, especially for Lock Raven. But I, I think that this particular water clar cl cl clarity is key for helping me get that bite. Got one, we're getting back in there. Let's go for number two. All right, we're back in the water. I need to gather as much information as I can about that bite. I cast it straight out, medium cast, about that far. Let me count that in depth. Two, three. Wow, okay, pretty deep right there. That short cast dropped to about eight feet deep, maybe a little more. And I was just slow rolling this bait along the bottom and I could feel my bait hitting stuff. So that fish was probably hanging out. Oh, okay, the ledge, the ledge right there. I just hit a small ledge. That fish was probably, probably hanging. Yeah, I can feel my bait coming up off the ledge. That fish was probably hanging on the ledge. So if, if that was a ledge fish, it is very possible there could be more stacked up. So we're gonna stay here for about 15, 20 minutes, just cast 
exactly as we did just now. And if we don't catch anything, then we'll move on and try to try to find some more ledges and see if we can put together a bank fishing pattern today at a 2400 acre reservoir. Holy moly, got someone's fishing line. That's how you know it's a good spot when other people are fishing it. Let's see what this guy's been fishing. Let's see what he's fishing for. All right. Oh, well, second catch of the day, guys. We got a chatter bait with a pretty big swim bait on it. This must be a good spot. If this dude's out here getting snagged in rocks out here and probably spent a good amount of time, I'll go ahead and clean this up real quick. I think we found the juice. In fact, after I fish your spinner bait, I'm gonna throw on a jig and just crawl it along the rocks right here. This is just a giant rock pile, like pretty much offshore. Oh, I guess not really offshore. It's about 30 yards out, not that far. I'm gonna go ahead and clean this up. This is my bag right here. Always try to leave the place a little cleaner than when you found it. If you guys live by that motto, the world will be a much better place. Bunch of that, man. Something gigantic just swam over here. Freaking muskrat or beaver? What is this? Swimming out again. It's a freaking muskrat right there. Again, baby! Woo! 20 minutes later. Oh, this is another good one, guys. This is another good one. Stay pinned. Go! Oh, it's even bigger. It's even bigger. Woo! -hoo -hoo. This is absolutely insane. 52 degrees, stained, and we're catching some mondos. Come on, stay pinned, dude. I don't even know how big this thing is. This is this one's bigger. What is this guy? Let's see. Let's see. Oh my gosh! A, dude, this guy's three plus, four plus. Five, all right, four plus, four, no, three plus. All right, all right. On the trailer hook, on the trailer hook. Look at that, look at this. Oh my gosh, he's, bar he's, he's barely skin hooked. Look at this. We got him on the zig, that is why you use the trailer hook right there. Look at this, look at this. On that little bitty dot of skin right here. Little bitty dot of skin. Hook will just pop right out. Woo, we're getting a weight on this one. Three plus easy, easy three plus. Okay, calm down. Calm down, one rod. Just a fish. Just a fish that I worked six plus hours to find in a 2400 gigantic reservoir. This guy is fat, look at that. Look at that pre-spawn belly, that is beautiful. This one has his black marks too. Go ahead and get a quick weight on her and we'll let her go. Official weight, come on scale turn on, there we go. You know what? I'm thinking maybe just under three. I mean, this fish is really fat, but it's kind of short. Yeah. All right, this one's like two, just over two and a half. That makes sense. I mean, if you look at this fish, let's give it a quick sip of water before we let it go. If you guys take a look at this fish, I mean, she's thick. She's thick, but she ain't very long. It's a short one. You guys know what I'm talking about. Look at that, red crush plates, feeding, Feeding on crawfish, possibly. Feeding on the bottom. I mean, the water's cold, but that's, those are some extremely red crush plates. Wow, look at those red lips. I mean, that's like ruby red. That's crazy how red they are. Clearly feeding on the bottom. I wish, it was, I wish it would regurgitate something, let me know exactly what she's eating, but I definitely caught her dragging that spinner bait along the bottom. All right, she's ready to go. All right, big girl. See you later, thanks for that. Oh, okay. Uh, let's break down exactly what we're doing right here and how I was able to be successful. Let's check our line, still good. I do wanna explain what I'm doing here, but I also don't wanna not be fishing. So I'm gonna explain while I'm fishing. Just got fish number two. There's no way I can not be in the water right now. Okay, let's take a second here. Do the exact same thing, let the bait hit the bottom. Fish number one came Right over this area, fish number two came right over here, both times in about somewhere between six to eight feet of water, slow rolling it on the bottom, hitting all kinds of junk down there. I mean, this whole cove right here is just littered with mostly just rocks, probably a couple stick ups as well, but lots and lots of rocks. 
And just now that I'm thinking about it, those rocks are probably key as to why these nice looking fish are hanging over here. Those rocks are gonna hold a lot more heat than the surrounding area. And these fish, water being 52 degrees, want somewhere comfortable to hang out. They've, they've come over here, nice and rocky, six to eight feet. We got a pattern, we're gonna keep fishing. And I do wanna just mention that first pattern that we, we tried, that I attempted coming out here, try to fish the north end of the lake, not a bad idea. I wanted to fish a little muddier water because we had bluebird skies. I don't want like super clear water trying to fish bluebird skies. The fish are kind of finicky in those conditions. But the issue was the water was too muddy, not enough structure and cover for me to effectively fish. There's a couple of lay downs and stuff along the shoreline, but that was about it. So right here, we've got a lot more opportunity to cover productive water that can easily hold fish. And so far it's paying off. Let's keep at it and see what we get for number three.